Chinese provinces and regions have all released their economic scoreboards for 2015, and their performances are divided. China's coastal provinces of Guangdong and Jiangsu and Shandong continue to lead nationally on gross domestic product, while the northeastern region is slipping further back. And now for more on this, when I'm joined in the studio by my colleague Wu Haojun. Good evening, Haojun. Good evening. So the tally of the performances of different regions and provinces, uh, what does it say about the state of their economies? Well, Zoya, there are always going to be overachievers and underachievers when we have comparisons like this. But it does seem now that the gap is getting wider. The three biggest economies in 2015 are unchanged from 2014, still Guangdong, Jiangsu, and Shandong. Well, these three are already economic heavyweights. Let's also look at now who the dark horses of 2015 were. The Tibet Autonomous Region, Chongqing Municipality, and Guizhou Province all coming from now relatively humble beginning in terms of the size of their economies registered the fastest GDP growth in 2015. Now on the other end of the spectrum, you have growth rates below and approaching zero. Notably, the heavy industrial hub of Liaoning slipped from the seventh largest economy in China in 2014 to the tail end of the top 10 rank. Analysts have attributed the lackadaisical performances by northeast China and provinces like Hebei and Shanxi to hard times in the heavy industries and commodities. These economies, unlike other more service-oriented regions here in China, have taken the brunt of the domestic and global economic slowdown here. Mm. Okay. And also, let's look at the bigger picture. That's the national economic growth. Um, maybe one of the best uh, indicators is lending by banks to private individuals and businesses. What about that? Yes, while the Chinese economy is still facing some pretty tough headwinds economically, Chinese banks are definitely looking to help out. They're adopting a more aggressive stance in helping businesses, with lenders handing out a record 2.51 trillion yuan in new loans last month. And if you look at the move by Chinese banks in conjunction with recent statements from Premier Li Keqiang about the economy, you get a sense of how and when the government will step in if things go further south. In comments published recently, Premier Li said that China would not shy away from using its gold bandit cudgel to keep growth on track, a reference to the magic weapon wielded by the Monkey King in a classic Chinese novel, but implying that the leadership would be aggressive on the policy front. And that's exactly what happened on Tuesday. Guidelines jointly issued by China's central bank planning agency Finance Ministry and financial regulators required banks to grant more credit to targeted areas such as clean energy and upgrading the country's manufacturing sector. So essentially the money and the determination are here in case, just in case of more hard times ahead. So, yeah. Of course. Thank you so much for the reporting, Kevin.